Alright, these are two of the baits that we caught. This is a gizzard shad here. This is a thread fin. The herring were much larger. You saw those earlier. You'll see they both have that little thread fin on the dorsal, so that's not the way to tell them. If you look at the mouth, see how blunt that top nose is? And this mouth here is a little closer to the mouth of a herring. Also the yellow tail, this little bit of purple that you kind of see through there. And the dot is not nearly as pronounced usually. And when it is, it's, it's closer to the gill plate and up high, where this is a little further away from the gill and it's, it's a little darker. But you can see that yellow fin in the mouth, like a herring, big difference. That's really the best way to tell. All right, I'm gonna take a minute and show you our rig here. This is a two-aught owner hook. This is a circle. I like the ones with the straight eye. M-U-T-U is the model number. The demon circles are nice. Owner, really good hooks. I really like them. That straight eye is important. Coming through. Can't wait. Okay. Get this in the water quick. Getting in the mouth at the top. And uh, the reason I do that is because I have found that they get less foul hook that way. If you go through the nostrils, I would have to use one of those little bait buttons. Just sliding up the line and rehooking the hook point back into the bait's head. Fishing some, some planer boards back in the creek. So we got some good sized gizzard bait. We gotta hook them in the nose. I don't know if you can see here real quick. That little orange piece of rubber right there. These are called bait buttons. They have them in Bass Pro. They have a little dispenser. And what we do is we put those there. We hook these baits. They'll want to slide up if you don't have this bait button here. It'll slide all the way up and rehook just like that. And then you're pulling the bait rehooked. And you'll get hits and fish come off and you can't figure out what's wrong, that's what's wrong. So there's a little bait button keeps it from sliding up. We netted some of these just a little while ago here. If you look, we got some really nice baits here. Normally you don't want to net that many at one time. I'm just doing it for the video purpose. You only want to net one at a time. Now what I like to do is, I put this little rubber piece here, it's off a plastic worm. And what I like to do is hook from one nostril, little slight wiggle, through to the other nostril, okay? And what this rubber snub does, it keeps the bait from sliding up and rehooking itself, okay? This is a common way here. It's a J hook with a stinger hook, with a stinger treble hook. It's been around forever, it's just a great way to get you know, a lot of good hookups on even medium sized fish when they're taking baits that are too big for them. This is a nine inch bait here, but you know, a nine inch gizzard gets very, very wide in the middle. So it can be a little tricky for a smaller fish to get it down their mouth quick. So a stinger hook is really, really helpful. Stinger hooks are great because you can pull the baits quicker instead of going, you know, like two tenths of a mile or three tenths of a mile just creeping. You can crank the motor up to one and a half, even faster, even two miles an hour and just really pull them along. Because when the fish comes up, I mean, you know, they're, they don't have to turn the fish, turn the bait to get it down. They're going to grab it and they're going to get hit here or hit here. So uh, stinger hook is a great, great tool to have in your arsenal. This is just a basic design. You've seen this one everywhere. It's a big one here in the south. And it's just a J hook with a piece of leader attached here. And it's, it's tied right to the bend in the hook. You can use a Palomar knot or a trilene knot or something that's good for fluorocarbon. And then you have your tiny treble hook. I'm not sure what size this is, but uh, it's small. You don't want to go very big with these, you know. And when you're fighting your fish, be delicate with them because a lot of times the only thing that's holding them on is this treble hook. And these are thin wire. They can bend. They can pull out. So uh, if you're if you're near timber or in river system or something like that, you might want to go like 4X hooks that are very, very strong. They're still small, but they're a lot thicker. Woo. Everything I got's running. Yeah, right. You're shivering so darn much. <laughs> how he gently squeezes the fish. I won't put fishing up the top. Go right here. Under the butt. All right. Butt tops. Right in the angle fin. Right there. Right. Get that scale on.
this little trick here is a good one. This one will win a tournament here. Uh, I have never showed this one before. And it goes with the idea of, you know, when a fish will not hit a bait with a big honking scary hook in its face, it just won't hit it. We'll just delete it. You know, a lot of the times the fish just hits the, the stinger anyway. So I have a clip here. And I've used swivels in the past. You can put a swivel on this and you just swivel, you just clip this to the lip, inside lip of the gizzard shed. And then you can go ahead and put your stinger in his back here if you want, or you can put it in the anal fin down here. Like I said, most of the time they hit the stinger anyway, but you know, it's is only it, when the fish are extremely, extremely finicky, maybe crystal clear water, maybe they're smaller fish. Maybe you netted a bunch of bait that's just bigger than what you like. This is a good tip right here because a lot of the smaller fish just get nipped the tail anyway. It's all give and take here. You know, you're giving, you're getting some stuff and losing some other. All right, we have three, four feet. This is fluorocarbon's 15 pound test. This water is not terribly clear. You don't need fluorocarbon in water like this necessarily, but I like to go ahead and use it on everything. You never know, right? Now my main line is 30 pound test. That's because we use these rods and reels for everything. So we'll troll with them, we'll use cut bait, we'll fish in salt water where there's fish this big and we'll use them in lakes where there's fish this big. Basically we change our leader depending on the fish we're, we're going for. So if we're using small baits, we'll go with lighter line if we can get away with it. If we're in cover or tight to, you know, structure, we have to go a little heavier. But here, there wasn't much structure, rocked in some area, but these fish are pretty much coming to the top when they're, when they're hooked up. And there's nothing really solid on the bottom except for a few little areas. So we only went with 15 pound test. If you go to 15 pound test, it's nice and light. The baits look much more natural, smaller diameter, a little less apt to scare the fish away. So 15 pound test was, was good for this. Really good for freshwater stuff, a lot of freshwater stuff. Like I said, unless you're on the bottom over structure, 15, 12 pound test is nice. This is our, our 30 pound main line. You'll see a glass bead. These baits were small. So I only had one to one glass bead. If we have big baits where they can really pull and really put some action on the line, I like to go with two or three glass beads because they'll rattle and knock together. Plus the bead is good because when you're using your board or your float, when you trigger the board, it slides down and stops here. It doesn't go over your swivel and go all the way down to your fish. And it's also really nice when you're pulling boards, anything really, to have a lighter leader than your main line because if you snag up, you'll break your leader and you won't break your main line and your board won't float away on you. So these are our reels. These are the Accurate 400s for fresh water, especially for small fish like this. These are way overkill, of course. Like I said, we use these for everything. But an Abu 6500 uh, or the Accurate Fury is a great fresh water reel. <coughs> great for salt water too. But. And we just had our floats and boards and Hope this video helps a few of you out. Please subscribe, I'll be your best friend. Be safe on the water, leave a few for me. Go fishing, man. It's a nice day. Yeah!